Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today's topic will be on pollination and fertilization. Thank the pollination, I get my fruits and I'm cheat. You have heard from the little princess that pollination helps to give us fruits and make us cute. Let us define pollination. Pollination is a process by which a pollen is being transferred from the anther to the stigma of a flower. Notice the demonstration. The anther, which is part of the male part of a flower, produces uh, pollen, and the pollen will be transferred to the stigma, which is part of the female part of the flower. Now, there are two main types of pollination. You have self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination is the process by which a pollen is being transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. So notice the demonstration. The male part, which is the part of, the, part of it, which is the anther, pollen grains are being transferred over to the stigma and it is occurring within the same flower. Now cross-pollination is a process by which a pollen is being transferred from the anther to the stigma of a different flower but they must be of the same species and to make that clear for example a cucumber plant cannot be crossed with a citrus plant i said they must be of the same species they may be different varieties but they must be the same species so if you notice this is one flower on the left and the pollen is being transferred from the anther over to that stigma of the other flower. Now, pollination can be assisted in different ways or by different agents. And we have three listed here, the three main ones. We have wind. So wind can carry pollen from anther to stigma. We also have insects. In insects or animals could assist in transferring pollen from anther to stigma. And water can also assist in that process. Let us take a look at a live video on pollination. Enjoy and come back for fertilization. The live example of pollination, the pollination process, a bee is pollinating a flower. All right, and we are steady. So we have wind blowing heavily today. And wind is also a factor of pollination because when the wind blows, it will dust some pollen grains onto the stigma of the flower. Now, if you no, observe the bee carefully, the bee moving from flower to spring pollination. You can see the bee pollinating the flower. Um, a matter of fact, a pollen is on its head. Um, it's moving from flower to flower, which is great. Okay, um, it's kind of windy, and um, wind also aids in pollination. So there are two factors working right here. So you notice the flower is really moving by the wind and also the bee is moving from flower to flower and um, if you look closely on the head of the bee you will notice there is some pollen grains All right great so notice is diving in going in to take in pollen it's very lovely it's very great to watch let me just um, zoom in right great beautiful so you can see the bee moving from flower to flower notice that yellow stuff and its head is actually some pollen grains all right and it's diving into another flower which is awesome let me see how close that could go into that one great nice okay so you can watch that movement awesome so moving okay great job so the bees going in and the anthem oh yes now the anthem is sticking on um to the stigma if you notice how it's working um let me see if i could go even closer you could see okay awesome job great stuff all right, so it's lovely to see in a live action of pollination. Um, be moving from flower to flower, pollinating the flower. It's absolutely amazing. It's how nature works. Um, very beautiful. Um, so we have two factors noticeable right here. Wind and insect pollination is taking place. The wind is really blowing. I notice the anther and the stigma. You can see the stigma, which is kind of long, pointed away from the anther. Um, so you notice that, let me zoom in down into a little bit, into that you'll get to see a, um, a chance to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's kind of windy, 
So just bear me with the time. Okay, so you notice that long. And if you look closely, you will observe a number of things on these things. Um, right here, I'm going to zoom into that. This will be a fruit that come from the developed um, ovary. And if you, don't closer, if you look closer down, you'll realize you can see the anther. So these yellow stuff. It must be good watching that live video on pollination. Now let us talk about fertilization. Now, fertilization is a process by which sperm cell from the pollen fuses with the ovule in the ovary. The demonstration you're seeing at the bottom is for pollination. Be because fertilization comes after pollination. So, before fertilization can take, can take place, the pollen must be attached to the stigma, which is by pollination. Then after pollination, a pollen tube is formed and it extends from the stigma all the way down into the style. So this section is known as the style of the female part of the flower. Eventually, the pollen tube will extend all the way down into the ovary and attach itself onto the ovule. Um, a number of things to note right here is that within a single pollen there are two sperm cells also note that the ovule will eventually form seeds and the ovary will form the fruit so the next time you're eating a fruit just note that you're eating a developed ovary the next step is that the sperm cell will travel down the pollen tube and attaches to the ovule and once that attachment is being made, the nuclei of the sperm cell and the ovule will fuse. And that result in fertilization. Now let us break again for another live video on some results of pollination and fertilization. Some tomato fruits right now as a result of pollination. Um, you can see the fruit there, the resulting um, effects. Um, fruits came from ovaries. So when ovaries are developed, they form fruits and inside the ovary you have ovules that form seeds so nicely growing tomato um, fruits and then this will be the flower and um, let me get a zoom on that a little bit um, so we can actually assist the tomato fruit um, or the flower by pollinating them using um, q-tips so we could dust the pollen grains from the anther onto the stigma and assist Okay, here I have some um, other fruits growing, so you could see them um, nicely growing there. Um, these, this one just coming up, so I will have to pollinate that one, assist in pollinating that one. If they're not pollinated, then the flower may fall off because they're not mature. Just like females, when they're not um, fertilized, the eggs are not fertilized, then they will shed it by menstruation. So sometimes plants will shed their, their flower if they're not pollinated. All right, so the tomato plant is growing nicely and um, showing some real good results because of assisted pollination. So because of pollination, I could be able to get some fruits. This is sweet pepper and um, they were pollinated. So, and they are growing very nicely. So it's very good uh, for pollination to help us in uh, um, obtaining food, fruits. Thank the pollination, I get my fruits and I'm chipped. If you have enjoyed this lesson, and you wish to see more lessons like these, just share with your friends and hit the subscribe button. See you in the next lesson.